Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're going to be talking about quite a few different things, uh, one of which really includes these new regulations and laws regarding animals. And this is some really, really important stuff for anybody who's into exotic wildlife. There's a black mama about to eat your head. I took that picture. So the first thing we're going to talk about is my tegu gordo, and if you've been following us for a while, you've seen him before. He is an Argentine black and white tegu that I caught, I think we're going on six years ago at a gas station with a friend of mine. And so tegus are an invasive species here in South Florida. They're a big issue down here. They eat a lot of native animals. They dig up alligator nests. Uh, they're a major ecological issue here in South Florida, but they're also very popular in the pet trade, and they can make a really great pet for someone who knows what to do with them. Now, being that these animals are an invasive species in South Florida and they are very detrimental to the environment, you would be like, okay, well, you know, it makes sense to pass some regulation about them. And it does to some extent, but not the extent that they took this. It is now easier for me to go out and buy a gun than it is to go out and have a tegu. And it's just really, really crazy. Like, to have a tegu now, we have to have it behind a locked door inside of, an, inside of a room with double doors. Or if we want to keep it outside, it has to have four-foot-high concrete walls. I mean, and not that I'm anti-gun. I, I have my own guns, too. I'm just saying. It is, <laughs> that is not what this video is about. <laughs> it's, it's not what the video is about, but that's a comparison I'm making because it does make it just seem totally insane that it is literally easier to go buy a gun and keep it in your house than it is to get a pet tegu that tons of people have that actually make really good pets. And tegus don't kill people. People kill people. <laughs> so I've had this tegu for many years without any issue whatsoever, and uh, so I was able to be grandfathered in. But we had to go and get him pit tagged with a marker, uh, send in an, an application to Fish and Wildlife, and have our address and GPS location of the tegu exactly on it and everything like that. And I mean, again, because they are detrimental to the environment and they're an invasive species, I understand some regulation but not to this degree. I mean, it really is crazy. And it also caused issues too, because one of the main reasons that, or one of the main ways that invasive tegus are removed from the environment in South Florida is by personal trappers that capture them and then ship them to Northern states to sell into the pet trade. And although you might be thinking, well, the pet trade is what causes the problem in the first place, that may be true, but this is what's removing the most amount of tegus are these, these personal people trapping them. And now they can no longer ship them out to other states for pets. So when all this went down, we thought we were going to end up having to get rid of our tegu, and we were really concerned about it. Um, we had them in a really nice outdoor enclosure we spent a lot of money on, and so it was, uh, it's pretty irritating to put all this money and time into having them outdoors and happy and uh, secure, obviously, and then having to change everything up and think we are going to lose them. Thankfully, we didn't lose them, uh, and we were able to get a really awesome indoor enclosure to have him in now. So we're really excited about this awesome, brand new, super nice enclosure, and uh, we got it from Toad Ranch. So you definitely want to check them out. They make amazing high-end luxury reptile habitat. So we're really excited. So we're going to take you into the other room and show you this enclosure. So this is our amazing new enclosure from Toad Ranch. And this, look, look at the size of this thing. It is massive, right? Huge setup. And it's uh, four feet deep back there, four feet high. And I think it's seven feet wide, you know? I'm, I'm like six five, so if I'm right there, yeah. So uh, yeah, this thing is just huge, super cool. We just set it up. We, have, um, we also have these display cases on the bottom. I thought that was a really cool touch, kind of like a bookshelf. And there's the there's jelly bean the toucan in the background yelling at me, um, but uh, yeah. So we have some gator skulls and turtle shells down here on display. But we just set this up uh, with some beautiful plants, and uh, we hung some fake plants from the top. We have a bunch of real plants. We have UV lights in there, a bunch of different bulbs, and here's Gordo over there chilling. Can you open it up and take a look? Yeah. So, as per regulation, this has to be under lock and key now, so he has to be in lockdown. You're in prison, Gordo. There he is, hanging out in there. On this episode of Florida's Wildest Cribs, check out Gordo the Tegu, chilling in his little kingdom. What's in there? Who's in there? Who's in there, Clovis? Who's in there? Oh, doesn't care about the takers. Like, is there food? Is there a food bowl? All right, all right, that's enough of that. All right. 
So, we're really excited about this setup. Again, we cannot thank Toad Ranch enough for sending us over. This thing is so darn cool. That is enough out of you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we, we do pride ourselves on having really nice setups for our animals and trying to have these spacious setups for them as well. So we want to try to give them as natural of an enclosure as we can. And so Gordo has been very happy with this new setup. So is Clover. She's very, very interested in this. Silly girl. So another really cool thing about this is Toad Ranch made it really easy to make this uh, this setup compliant with the regulations. So we're very thankful for that because when we first heard about it, we were kind of freaking out. You know, it's going to be very difficult to find something that would fit the regulations and then also be able to fit the requirements for the animal. You know, we can't just put him in an aquarium or anything like that. Like he needs something bigger, and the requirements need something much more durable. So we were very excited about this setup. Uh, they shipped it out, and we were able to. Gabby and I were able to make this ourselves. Put it all together. Uh, pretty easily so this thing is really cool top of the line what I think is really cool is the background and you can actually pick the background they asked Chris if they wanted uh, if he wanted to use one of his backgrounds but we just yeah. went with like this Australian like forest so pretty oh we could have done like you know a black mama picture in the back <laughs> yeah because that makes sense look how happy he is so this is Gordo just so you guys can see him a little bit so, you know, again, I, uh, I caught him at a gas station in Homestead with a friend of mine, I think about six years ago. So he's a, he's a pretty good boy. He's got a nice little, like, orange belly on him. Um, and ever since we caught him, he's got this kind of weird little jaw thing going on right there where it kind of sticks out on the side some. But otherwise, he's, he's a pretty good boy. Oh, a little head shake. You see him sticking his tongue out there. So they do have a forked tongue. They stick out just like a snake to pick up a scent in the environment. Want to go back in your thing? It's going to go right back under the light. <laughs> so when they made these regulations regarding the tegus, it was, it was tegus and iguanas. And, uh, you know, those are both invasive here in South Florida, but they're already an established animal here. And so these regulations don't really make very much sense because it doesn't stop the animals out there, you know? I mean, now I can't own an iguana, but there's like 20 of them in my backyard. And it just, it's, it's a very weird, strange situation. And, and a lot of these situations, what happens is a politician uh, who doesn't understand the animals, and I'm not saying that to be derogatory, but you know, they don't understand the ecology of the animals or the situation, but they're being pressured to make moves, to do something about these problems. And so, okay, we'll pass this law so people can't have them. It's like, okay, well, the iguanas and the tegus in the wild in my backyard don't exactly read the law, so they're going to keep doing what they're doing, but now we can't keep them, you know, and we can't bring him anywhere for educational talks anymore. And that was a big one, too, is we used to bring him all the time to schools and do talks with him, and, and now we're not allowed to. Now, if you're not familiar with what's going on right now, there is a new piece of legislation put into, it's actually hidden in a massive 2,912 page bill that has to do with all kinds of other stuff, financial stuff, things like this, and hidden in there is one little piece about adding a bunch of animals that are basically anything that's not a dog or a cat or a farm animal onto the Lacey Act as injurious wildlife. And so this would prohibit people from being able to own or move across state lines, rather, any of these animals, such as this guy right here, or our parrots, or, I mean, basically anything that's not a dog or a cat or a farm animal. Now, if you're thinking, well, I don't keep reptiles, what does that have to do with me? Well, it applies to just about everything. Our parrots, the toucan, if you have a ferret, you know, um, I mean... They can add on just about anything onto this, and we don't know yet exactly what animals are going to be under that, but the wording right now is going to be dogs and cats and only, like, farm animals are going to be allowed to move across state lines. Now, this is also a big deal, too, the state lines thing, because if you live on the border, like, let's say you're in New York and your vet is in New Jersey 20 minutes away, you can't cross that state line with your animal now. Even though it's an imaginary border right there, you can't go across with your animal now without committing a felony. That's the other thing too, is this is going to be a Lacey Act felony charge. It is not playing around here. And so this is a huge issue. 
With us personally, uh, you know, we have all of these rescue animals at our house here in Florida, and we were considering moving because the housing market in Florida is so bad. We rent right now, and we're trying to buy a property, and it's just impossible in Florida right now. The housing market is skyrocketed like 300%. So anyways, that's a whole sob story in itself, but we were considering moving to somewhere like Texas, where wildlife laws are a little bit more lax, and it's a little bit cheaper. So let's say we wanted to move our rescue to Texas. We can't if this goes by. We're not going to be able to bring him or the toucan or the parrots or, I mean, basically every, even the fish, even our pet fish, you know? I mean, it's everything. And so that would be really, really bad. Now, also speaking of moving rescues, uh, some of our rescue animals came from other states. Like we have Fern the Redfoot Tortoise that came from Minnesota. And his owner drove him all the way down from Minnesota because he felt that he would have a better life here in Florida living outdoors with us. And now, if that situation were to happen again, if you lived up north and you're like, ah, oh, it snows all day, you know, it's cold, I have a tropical animal, I think it's better if I bring him down to a southern state where he's gonna have a happier life. Now you can't do that. You know, or we are, uh, we have uh, the Savannah Monitor that we're going to adopt out. And the person who wants to adopt it lives up north in a different state. And now we're not, if this were to pass, we would not be able to send the Savannah Monitor up to this person to adopt it from our rescue. So what can you do about this issue? Well, you can email your senator. And we want to try to do this in a courteous way, a respectful way. No one listens to you if you sound like a crazy person. That's important. And so you can email your senator about this. You can learn more about the situation by reading up on it, checking out other channels too. I know um, Chandler, Justin, and Tyler just did a video talking about it too. They go into more depth than I know about it, so check them out and uh, try to learn more about the situation that's going on and see if you can make moves to try to help this situation. We're going to put a link in our video about this too so you can try to help out. So sorry, this is kind of a bittersweet video, guys. We're super happy and excited about this new setup. This is so awesome. And again, thank you so much to Toad Ranch. But, you know, kind of bittersweet is that we have to talk about this regulation stuff, you know, and how this might affect everyone who keeps exotic or works with exotic animals, right? So anyways, leave a comment, guys. Hit like, share, let us know what you think of the video. And, uh, you know, again, we're going to put some info in here so you can contact your senator about trying to help about this.